this is not going to change it that often. The steps group can. Well, so there are some people who would be like taking it in their bag, going taking to work, it apart, every, like work, all the time. Yeah, sure. um, and so it's whatever we have, it'll have some kind of set screw. It'll have a set screw or a spring lo a spring loaded bearing or something to, mm -hmm. to hold it. For the most part, keep them on the table. Um, some kids at the New York meetup dropped one, which is why that one only lights up on half now when I plug oh, it okay. in. okay. Can I see the back of one? Um, here, the back of the one that I've already separated. Okay. Um, we'll have real feet for production. These were from McMaster for yeah. sort of... Yeah, for, for like prototyping. Yeah, it was yeah. It was actually because we, when we were talking to the mechanical engineer, he's like, oh, mm -hmm. the feet will be easy. I'm like, you don't understand. It needs to, uh -huh. uh, it needs to tent. Right. It needs to have a negative tilt. Right. It needs to have a positive tilt. Yeah. It needs to have a negative. It needs to have a positive tilt tent. It needs oh. to have a negative tilt tent. Huh. And, it, and we get to the end, and he's like, "Oh yeah, the feet are hard." Yeah. Um, I think you know what you need to do is like gooseneck the crap out of it. So you actually your keyboard is actually on a gooseneck, and well, it actually has one of those balls that you can actually just like. So rotate so right now two degrees this, of freedom. These connecting center bars. That's yeah. a quarter twenty tripod mount. Okay. Um, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Is this? Are you recording yeah, full yeah, video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just yeah. like knowing, not, knowing that I'm, I'm on, on camera, I'll try oh, to, yeah. I'll try to use <laughs> fewer obscenities. <laughs> you know, there that's be, fine. That's fine. We are an open community. I won't actually say the names of people I hate. No, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's all good. So, I guess the the right mm -hmm. thing to do is probably start with how I got here. Sure. Um, about two and a half years ago, a startup I was working on cratered. And my, my co-founder's husband got laid off, and so she quit to go be able to keep paying rent. I kind of understand that. Mm -hmm. um, and I swore I was going to take a year off to mess around, learn new things. Right. And I figured that was mostly software new things. But I, I'd read on the internet that people were building keyboards. Like, I found these web forums where people had built their own keyboards from scratch. And I tried building a keyboard based on a 3D printed shell that I downloaded the source for this guy named Docs that I put into the forums. Mm -hmm. um, this was the very first version of the Ergo Docs. And the plan was I'd order the shell and I'd order key switches. Mm -hmm. And if I actually put the key switches into the, sh into the top half of the shell, I would order a soldering iron so I could solder, so I could solder them together. And if I got them soldered together all right, I would order the, the bottom halves of the enclosure, because these things were like 60 bucks per port. Um, and it was sort of like inching my way along toward a working keyboard. Hmm. And so finally I get to a working keyboard, and I realize that I just, it's not very comfortable, it's not what I want. Hmm. But at this point, I have now figured out how to solder a keyboard together from scratch. Um, I know that it took about 40 hours because I was not, I was a software guy, I hadn't soldered since age seven. <laughs> um, and so I did it wrong four or five times. Yeah. And it was all point to point soldering. Soldering oh, wow. the, leg of a diode, the, uh, the leg of a diode to the leg of the switch, soldering uh -huh. the, di the diodes to each other, wow. wire in the other direction. And I was using just the wrong, like, wire that was way too stiff, so it was really hard to get it aligned right. Um, it took about 40 hours because I watched all of Arrested Development while <laughs> soldering. <laughs> Awesome. But I get to the end of that, and I have this keyboard that works, but I hate it. Oh. Um, and so I pull out, uh, there's a Mac, pro Mac program called OmniGraphle. It's mm -hmm. kind of like Visio, or, or it's a vector drawing program. Right. And I draw the shape of the keyboard that I actually want. And I apologize, at some point there will be a phone call, and I may have to duck That's all right. Out. That's um, all right. Yep, there's a family thing. But, yeah. Um, it is Father's Day. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but and so I send this this image. It's an 11 by 17 image that has holes where I think I want them. It's right. it's pretty much like a one piece, fully separated, ergo dox, mm -hmm. kind of like a flattened kinesis. Okay. And I send it off to the storefront laser cutting shop down down the street from us because mm -hmm. in Cambridge, Mass, we had a storefront mm -hmm. laser cutting shop. Mm -hmm. um, and they gave me back this big piece of green acrylic. Huh. And I stuck the key switches in it and I wired it up and I huh. used lots and lots and lots of well, I actually use super glue to keep the switches in place. Okay. Um, I later discovered that super glue has this, pro this leaching property with plastic. Oh. And so my cherry brown switches, which were supposed to be pretty nice switches, they were scratchy. They were scratchy because the super glue had actually like made all the surfaces rough inside. Mm. Um, hot glue works a lot better. Yes. Oh, okay. Hot, hot, hot glue. <laughs> okay. Hot, it, if you're used to working, yeah, hot glue is sort of, it's, a, it's 3D duct tape. Okay. Um, 
And so, so anyway, um, I discovered that I have this keyboard that kind of works. I still don't like it very much, but it also is, has electronics sitting flat on the table. Mm. So I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? I, I decided that I, this was an 11 by 17 sheet since it seemed like an easy, st easy starting point. So I go down to Michael's Crafts, the local chain craft store, mm -hmm. and I find a picture frame that's 11 by 17 and kind of tall. They're really confused that I don't want the glass for the picture frame. <laughs> They're even more confused that I want them to cut the mat that goes, in the, that, you know, goes behind it to the outside dimensions rather than the inside dimensions. Mm. Um, but it did work. Mm. Um, from there, uh, I, I started trying to laser cut a couple more variants of the keyboard. Um, this is, I think, three or four in. This was okay. Valentine's Day two years ago. And it's key switches stuck in. It's, layer, it's layered sheets of acrylic. Huh. The back is a Teensy 2.0 plus plus microcontroller hmm. and all sorts of horrible hand soldering. Yeah, um, I see that. Yes. Oh yeah. Thanks, G. It's not terrible. I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a little sad that I didn't bring the first thing because oh. the first thing is really bad. But oh. like the amount of solder I have on some of these joints is. Anyway, um, so a couple more like this, and people in cafes started saying, "Hey, where what can I is buy that, that keyboard?" <laughs> um, That's cool. And so I wrote up this blog post about here's how to make your own keyboard from scratch. Right. And at the very last minute, I put a link to a, a Launch Rock sign up page of like, find out when we do our keyboard Kickstarter. Nice. Figuring that we were going to do something a lot like those, like probably that. at this, like, and that I was going to hand assemble them. I'd get that there'd be PCBs. Yeah. But I also knew that there were like 50 people on Earth who'd want one. Right. Um, and it was going to be like a $200 Kickstarter, and it would be okay. Would be. And I go to bed having written this blog post about how to make your own keyboard. And I wake up the next morning. And it's sitting at the top of Hacker News. Oh wow! There are there are thirty thousand page views, and a thousand people have clicked through and signed up to the mail. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> that is amazing. Nuts. Um, this was right around when our three D printer finally showed up. Oh! I ordered a three D printer before I started all this because I knew that if I'm going to be making three D shapes and building things, right. everyone had told me three D printers the way in the light. Three D printers, will, you know, they're magic. They will, you know you know, wash puppies and, you know, <laughs> uh, they can 3D print gold coins and everything will be wonderful. Um, I developed a 3D printer hobby because I needed to to make the 3D printer work. Um, <laughs> Welcome to 3D printing. Welcome yeah. to 3D printing. <laughs> and, and, and the things I made, they weren't very nice. They weren't, like, they didn't, they were big. I had a 3D printer that I could do a foot by a foot by a foot. Oh, gee. Um, the problem was that when I took 3D printed keyboards out in public, people looked at them and said, Oh my god, you have a 3D printer? That's so cool. Tell me about 3D printing. Yeah, <laughs> not the I keyboarding. When keyboards out, people would say, Oh my god, that keyboard's so cool. Tell me about keyboards. Yeah. Um, and then there was this other problem with the 3D printer. And that one night, one of the first nights that we had actually decided that we were comfortable leaving it on, running a 24-hour print job overnight, it caught fire. Really? Um, so what happened is that the bed corners that came with it weren't very good. Oh. And so the vendor, the, the guy who invented it and was the CEO of the company, recommended on IRC somebody else's alternate bed corners that had uh, used set screws. Hmm. Now those set screws, unfortunately, um, because their limit switches weren't very good, the head would push down pretty hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. Those set screws punctured the Kapton heating tape, uh. bridge, um, bridging all that voltage across the aluminum build plate, okay. which popped one of the FETs in some way I don't understand. The build plate, ca the Kapton tape and heater caught on fire, and it bridged 20 volts up USB, up USB to my computer. Hmm. Um, it melted the, the end of the USB cable that was, connect that was connected to the ramp board inside the printer. Wow. Um, yeah, 3D printing was not great. Um, it's also like not, it's a really useful tool for some things, but there are some things yeah. where when we started, it was good for, you know, here's, you have an idea of a shape, um, let's see how it feels when you create it, but um, for things where we wanted to get the sense of like, if you actually have this out in public or take it with you or mm -hmm putting things like actually on keycaps and seeing how they feel, like it helps to have 
like real materials instead of you, yeah, printed. Yeah, three D printing keycaps. The keycap, mm -hmm. the stems of the keycaps will shatter because they're just oh. not very structural. Hmm. So these, what we've actually ended up with for for keycaps because we have these crazy keycaps, is CNC milling. Oh. Okay. So these are actually CNC milled from polycarbonate. Huh. And the stems of these do not snap. When I've gotten the tolerances slightly wrong, what snaps is the key switch. Hmm. Um, so the poly polycarbonate caps are actually kind of astonishing. Hmm. Um, the things you see here on, on the Model 1, these are all, these are all vacuum molded polycarbonate based, hmm. on, uh, based on a CNC mill original. They get, then get painted black and then they get laser engraved. Wow. Yeah. Um, but so we were, still do, we were still doing layered acrylic uh, and there was, a, and I, we were now at the point where we're starting to get ready to ask the internet if there could be like five people who'd be willing to pay the test for us. <laughs> I think we may have said two. Um, and so I ordered an awful lot of acrylic from McMaster Car, like five four by eight foot sheets. And then there was a blizzard. Hmm. And so our acrylic order was delayed and we had a laser cutting slot, which was a little bit hard to get that season. So we ran down to the lumber, lumber yard and bought a bunch of plywood. I figured, well, it won't be as good as acrylic, but it'll be something. And this is a slightly later design, um, but it is it was basically this. And hmm. so what you ended up with is, it looks like acrylic shows blemishes a lot. Acrylic cracks. Um, acrylic is kind of finicky to work with. If you use translucent acrylic, you can see all of the dust and fingerprints that ever got inside any layer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. One of, the, one of the weirdest things we saw when we were in China was we were in a factory that does, um, that does final, pro final processing for one of those super high-end consumer electronics companies who, whom I can't name on camera. Okay. Um, they're, they're the one. Um, there, was, there was a woman at the end of every packaging and assembly line, and her sole job wearing these white gloves was to remove fingerprints from any of the other staff that had gotten onto the product as it was being boxed. Oh wow! Um, it's yeah. Like, can you imagine that being your job? Your uh. your job all day is just take off fingerprints. Wow. Um, but anyway, so we did this wood thing, and we went out and bought some stain and some polyurethane, mm -hmm. um, and we put up a picture of it and sent mail to our mailing list saying, "Hey, uh, we've got two of these built. We might have a couple more built." Does anybody want a beta test one? Send us, you know, send us an email about why you're the right beta tester. Right. We got poetry. We got essays. Hmm. Somebody wrote software to try to prove why they were the right beta tester. At least two people wrote weird Arthurian sword in the stone fanfic with me as King Arthur. Two people independently. Wow. <laughs> it was the creepiest thing I've ever seen. I'm sorry if the if no, it's all right. that is watching this. No, that's fine. Um, one guy actually recorded a music video parody of the friend of the Friends opening theme about mm. wh um, why he needed our keyboardio. Oh wow! Um, it meant sending one to Hong Kong, but he got one. Okay. But so we got 150 wow. replies when we. That is we awesome. Yeah. Um, but this was right around when we figured out that if we actually tried to do this Kickstarter on yeah. our own, we'd probably be successful. Right. And then we would be. It would be an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> uh, and so we applied to Highway One, which is this hardware incubator in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They're owned by a, a mega company that does logistics and uh, logistics and packaging and makes stuff in China. Mm. And we didn't really think we'd get in because we still thought that it would. Yeah. We like it's a small market. Yeah. We're we're making we're not making a plastic thing for that you'll sell on radio shack shelves, and right. if you don't sell a million of a month, you're screwed. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, it is a boutique item, but we got in. We got in and we found out that we got in on day two of a 14 day uh, vacation to Argentina. Hmm. And so sitting on a friend's couch in Buenos Aires, we had to figure out how to incorporate because they need... They needed paperwork, like, they yeah. They needed a company to sign yeah. contracts with. Yeah. Um, and then we had about seven days when we got back to California to, or yeah. got back to Boston to move to California and we didn't come home for 10 months. Oh, wow. Um, my goodness. But yeah, um, from there... That's been... That's a quite story, actually. I mean, you know, because uh, it's taken you all the way down there, you know, like, and uh, yeah. and now, you know, that's that enabled you to, like, do more yeah. with your idea. It's... You know... Yeah, and so we came out of Highway 1 with right. an aluminum version of the keyboard that looked 
pretty sh pretty shiny, mm -hmm. but wasn't quite what we wanted. Um, that we'd gotten pushed pretty hard to not use wood. Okay. Because wood is you can't mass produce wood. Oh. We got told. Okay. Um, and the answer is you can't make millions of units of something identical out of wood. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about thousands of units, it turns out that there are companies that make things like furniture and guitars mm -hmm. that are actually quite adept at making things out of wood. Yeah. Doors, um, doors, windows. I mean, you know. Yeah. But yeah. And, I mean, but so each one of these enclosures has to be CNC milled. Oh, and okay. So that's a, like, it okay. takes time. So the price process, yeah. 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 Um, but so after that, we, th we figured by the time we got out of Highway 1, we were probably like five weeks out from Kickstarter. Okay. And we were five weeks out from Kickstarter for 11 months. Mm. Um, and we that kept finding things that felt wrong and oh. weren't right. And, yeah. you know, it's eventually we realized things had changed enough. We needed sort mm -hmm. of another set of beta testers. So okay. we froze the design okay. early this winter or January or February. Hmm. Um, and then it took a while to actually like produce this like mini production run of 20 right. and then get them into beta testers hands. Yeah. Um, wow. And there's some things we want to change from this version to production, mm -hmm. but it was close enough. Like people were right. happy enough that we're like, okay, we know the couple of little things we need to tweak and then we'll be good to go. So like, what were those? Highway one, these, uh -huh. these were the keycaps we'd ended up okay. with. Let's and they, here. someone else had designed them for us and they weren't right. Um, and what ended up happening is we, we get out of Highway 1 and realize that we're going to have to just throw them away and do it from scratch, which is a little sad. Hmm. And um, this is the point where I am shilling for Autodesk. Autodesk has given us lots of free stuff. Huh. And so just be, bear in mind that this is all totally shilling. Um, the deal that they, that they, they, mm -hmm. they gave every company that came out of Highway 1 a year of everything they make. Uh -huh. And actually, they give away the product they pushed us to, Fusion 360, to every startup, every student, every hobbyist. Oh, wow. Um, That's cool. It's super beta. Uh -huh. It's getting better, but it's super okay. beta. Okay. Um, it has the CAM engine. So when I say CAM, that's like computer aided machining, the thing that will right. generate tool paths for a mill. Right. It has the same CAM engine called HSM Works mm -hmm. that they have in their super high end AutoCAD inventor package. Okay. But they, they offered us this stuff and we said, great, yeah. can you recommend yeah. a contractor or a consultant who could that can, help us? Yeah. And they kind of hemmed and hawed a little bit. So like, it's too new. Yeah. But we pay some guys who are trained mechanical <clears throat> engineers mm -hmm. out of the marketing budget. They're evangelists. Maybe oh. one of them could help you. Mm -hmm. And they say, so if we do this, in trade, you have to let us make a video about you and do a press release about you and how you use Fusion 360 oh. um, and possibly have you at conferences. Hmm. And so it was basically in exchange for giving us free stuff, they gave us free publicity. Hmm. It was the easiest business decision we ever made. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're like, we're cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, if they haven't given you guys yeah. uh, like a workstation like, that has yeah. all their stuff, they did? Well, no, we not yet. No, 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 but no, no, not have, yet. We don't have a Fusion no. Um, so they, I mean, so they will give you not just Fusion 360, but like, in, but Inventor. Oh, okay. Um, if you can't find a contact, email me, and I will introduce you to the right contact. This is the thing they do for hackerspaces. Oh, cool. Right? Because they, unlike their competition at SolidWorks, mm -hmm. understand that if they get you hooked on their product early, you'll stick with it, especially when all of your designs are already in their product. Right. Um, it, it is like it is totally. A, it's it's another way to look at community building, like for which uses their the, product. The yeah. positive side is yeah. community building. Yeah. The negative side is the cigarette style business model. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, but also the people the people at Autodesk seem like nice people. Right. Which has been like right. We've been really lucky to end up meet, working with nice people pretty much everywhere we we've, we've okay. been work, like cool. We just stop working with people if they're not nice. Yeah. Um, but so what ended up happening is I would sit down with this, auto, with this guy at Autodesk mm -hmm. and say, I want some keycaps. Mm -hmm. And he would do some things in Fusion that would generate some blocks, some blocks. And I'd say, mm -hmm. okay, this side should be curvier. Mm -hmm. and, he, and it's like I'm standing at a projector pointing. And he was my English language CAD translator. And he's like, okay, that's a fillet. Mm -hmm. Put a fillet here. Mm -hmm. And what, about four or five months in, he was on vacation and I needed to make changes. Mm -hmm. I discovered that I had inadvertently done the cap. Oh, wow. Um, and so That's awesome. The keycap design is mine, and so I can point you at all sorts of things that are wrong with it and all sorts of weird artifacts. 
Um, the enclosure design was something that a mechanical engineer that, that we worked with did for us because it's a lot more complex on the underside and needs to screw in and oh. it needs to screw into Oh, like that. Oh, yeah. I see. And unfortunately, so, so I that, was super so, clever so and this, brought... So that needs to go inside yeah. that, so that, the wooden piece. Okay. I was super clever and bought, brought the left hand of this and the right <laughs> hand of this. Um, awesome. So you can imagine. We can imagine, yeah. Um, that's fine. But like one of the things that we did when... You know, we want to make it out of wood, but we also want you to be able to open it. Open it, right. So ordinarily, if you were going to have something that has an aluminum yeah. back plate yeah. and wood, you would just, you just use wood screws. Mm -hmm. And the wood screws would sink into the wood and... You could yeah. open it up four or five times, and yeah. it would probably still be okay. We ended up with these with these brass things brass, yeah. that are basically they have yep. knife edge screws on the outside. They screw in once, mm -hmm. and then you use machine screws to attach the these, the bottom and the, the top. To the one, yep. And that will be very useful because these things come with a screwdriver. Yeah. Um, because we want you to open it up and mess with it. Um, Brilliant. Um, there are things you can do to it that will yeah. void whatever the warranty ends up being. Yeah. Um, if you start soldering to the main board, we can't necessarily yeah. give you a free replacement. Right. Um, if you just open it and poke around, totally kosher. Right. Um, uh, so yeah. So one of the one of the things that we haven't done yet, and so we're not promising, is that what we want to do on the 